So I'm going to call uh, call to order the February 8th Conway Select Board meeting, 6 o'clock, actually 6.01. And uh, I guess first thing on our agenda, and this meeting, as I usually make sure everybody knows, you can watch this meeting on our FCAT Media channel through our video on demand um, uh, at FCAT. If you go to YouTube and then go to FCAT Media, you can fall asleep watching to our select board meetings. Uh, you also can watch uh, Frontier Sports. They're going to be recording girls and boys basketball. They're having live games, and they've already got some up there. And uh, they're, they're, they're excited to actually be out actually recording some real things now. And if you're a parent, that will be the only way you can see your child play sport. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and they're expecting they get good attendance because it's free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the minutes of last week's meeting, did everybody get a chance to look at them? Yeah. I looked at them, yeah. they seemed okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of last week's meeting. A second. Oh, thank you. I'll say aye. Aye. And meetings attended by select board members. So Erica, you get to go first. Um, none since last week. So how about you, Phil? Yeah, um, Friday was the another, seems like it's weekly now, the Deerfield Board of Health Frontier Regional School joint meeting uh, to reaffirm once again that sports will go forward, games will go forward, but parents will not be in attendance. Um, so, yeah. And then there are numerous, numerous budget, numerous Frontier and Conway School Committee budget stuff. Um, and then Tuesday and Thursday are going to be the adoption of the budget, the initial adoption by the by the school committees. So Tuesday, tomorrow is Frontier and Thursday is Conway. But until the committee votes for, on it, it's unofficial. It's just rumor. So you, you, you know what it is, but you're not telling. No, no, actually no. there are, um, there are several decisions to be made by the school committees at large before the final numbers. We know the rough, the rough, the rough guardrails of it. I know. Uh -huh. um, Great. That's it. That's it. Wow. Uh, well, no, I, I had no meetings unless I can count the Super Bowl. So, uh, once again, our. <laughs> Our revered Tom Brady shows he's really the GOAT and quite a game. Or a boring game, depending on what side you are on. So, yeah. any, any public comments? I don't see any public on the meeting. So, old business. So, our old business um, has to do with you, Mark and Denise. Um, last week, we had a discussion about signing a, an MOU and an administrative agreement to have Conway participate in the low income discount program that's available through the SMART program. And that Mark has been tracking for us as our Conway broker. And uh, you have anything, any new thoughts, Mark or Denise? No, and again, the, the only thing I wanna mention is all we're trying to do is line it up right now. The, the DPU saying, you know, let's hold off for, for the moment. That came, that letter came to Boston. Don't market the program yet. They have a couple of issues they want to work out. But what we're hoping to be able to do is only because your process is, is much more cumbersome at, on the municipal level than on the aggregate. I should not say aggregate, but on the supply side or the sole developer. So what we're hoping to be able to do is to say, hey, as soon as the project is ready and the department is signed off, We'll have a sole developer say, yep, this project matches up with um, Conway, marry the two, and on we go. Discounts not getting applied. Might there be anything we should worry about if it's not finalized? It... I, so I, I'm i not worried. I just don't know what the details, and Denise, please jump in. I don't know what the details will be on the other side of this. I don't know what the department's issue is currently with the, the um with the with the plan they haven't told us what that issue is so we're still trying to work out all the details right now yeah, it I just think feels to me that changing the program would involve changing the smart program 
right? I mean, it's so I can I can give you a little bit more detail. As far as so far, it's all compliant. We have a pre-authorization letter from the from the DOER. That's all set. But ultimately, we respond to the what well, we're under the DPU for a municipal aggregation, and they're saying, "Oh, there's some issues with it." But I think they had the wrong message, Bob, on how the program was structured. They didn't ask any questions that I'm aware of prior to issuing, "Hey, please don't do this at this time." So. They're going back and forth right now between the DOER, the DPU, um, and the Secretary of Energy, just working out details, which, as everyone's aware, can be uh, uh, cumbersome. They held us up, that's for sure. <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> well, that's what we're trying to make sure is we don't have to refile plans. That's I don't know if you remember the long conversation. Everyone wanted to get certain things in there. And we said, we don't want that because it's deregulated. Bob Armstrong and the select board gets to decide, not the department. And that's why we did what we did. But now- Yeah, this is Tom. Um, I, I, have, I have one question. Um, sure. I, is, I, I think one of the reasons that you're interested in being positioned to move ahead with the program is because there, there's still gonna be a limited amount of credits under this and it's pretty competitive to go out and get solar projects that that we can use to sign our residents up. If we if we don't get in quickly, um, we may lose out to other people who. I mean, this happened with the with the with the SREX, and I think with the first smart program, right? So so one of the reasons you want to get going quickly is so that we can actually get a solar project that. Um, is still looking for people to participate in it. Is that right? That, that's correct. As well as, you know, it shouldn't it happen, it shouldn't affect the first couple of tranches, but it's a declining auction uh, as well, uh, Mr. Hutchinson, meaning the first tranche is at six cents for the adder for the low income customer. Then it keeps coming down by 4% each 80 megawatts. So the sooner we get you in, the better um, that discount is for the, for the residents of, uh, of Conway. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So, Phil or Erica, do you have any other issues? Phil, I, I know you, you were concerned about Governor Baker's uh, possible amendments to a climate bill, but. Well, I mean, I, I, I sent you that link to the Boston.com article. And I just thought that, that the language in that article, it was skimpy, but it was just, you know, one of the reasons for the veto was the governor felt that there should be more put in towards low income access to solar. No, that article was saying that the new climate bill has more access to low, low, to more solar, low income solar. Not that there's any, any, not that he's pushing for it. it his uh, objections all had to do with um, how much low, how quickly we can lower the amount of emissions that are going into the atmosphere. And he thinks that the bill creates uh, limits that he thinks will be very difficult to reach. Y y you know, he wants, the, the bill calls for a 50% uh, reduction by 2030 from the 1990 levels. And he wants it to be 45 rather than 50%. And that, that, I mean, that was his biggest objection. But it has nothing to do with low income solar, <laughs> which is Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, and I believe he's happy that the bill contains provisions to expand low income solar, even more than what's in there now, which is what's covered in the smart program. So if there's something, is there, so is there other programs coming on the horizon? Is that, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> what, what do you mean by other programs? Something better. Is, is there, is there, is there any, I mean, I mean it, 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 not that I'm aware of. Only us here, Mark. You know, anyway, no, no. Yeah, I mean, not, not that I'm aware of. This is the program is a colonial program that we've kind of, you know, it's kind of our intellectual capital on how how we can use aggregation, and we've got it approved by the DOER. But that the the, the holdup now, whether or not someone else is coming along, uh, Mr. Cannon, I couldn't answer that question. I don't know what else they could do, but um, not nothing that I'm aware of. I've heard, I have not heard of anyone issuing anything like this idea, meaning the, the, the customer is not tied to this program in any way. 
you're just delivering a benefit. This is about the easiest program that we're ever going to be able to participate in. There, there may be things that happen in the future, uh, and, and especially as aggregations are taking over the state. Uh, you know, aggregations are, are hugely popular, and um, it won't be long until every town has an aggregation, I believe. We're on our way. I don't know about every town, but yeah, I would agree with you. Yep. So programs like this are really great for the utility because, you know, they can deal with the whole town as opposed to dealing with individual people. I mean, you know, it's 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 the same. You know, to to me, it's I I, I it, from everything I I can read, it seems like it's a good thing, but it's the, it's the whole thing about setting up processes um, that involve opacity and uh, you know just whatever, whatever that this this should be a function of government, not a function of private. But government has not stepped up. There is no alternative, governmental alternative. So. Well, I mean, it's government to the extent that select boards are in charge. Select boards get to decide whether their town wants to do it or not. And if we do, you know, then I don't believe we would want our select board to be con making contracts with, with the electricity generators. So we have, we do have a private company in between us and the generators that you hire and they're hired. And if we don't like them, we could go to somebody else. You know, we have a three-year contract, but but we could go to somebody else. And you know, last week you mentioned about you don't like the fact that it's opt out as opposed to opt in. And and what I've told and there were people who talked to me about that before the program. And my argument with them now now was, okay, that was true last May. So now you can decide if you want to opt in. It is an opt-in program now. They're out. They didn't have to join. They opted out. That's okay. They can decide to opt in if they want. It's totally a voluntary program. And what's different between this and the programs that you get, you know, slimy emails about join, you know, come buy electric power from us, is that they want you to sign a year or two year contract that you can't break. And they don't tell you what the price is going to be after about the first six months. And that's the pro those are the programs that our attorney general is really opposed to. Whereas by law, town aggregations, you can opt in or opt out at any time. So anybody that's unhappy with the program can go back to Eversource anytime they want. Just one phone call. Yeah, and just anecdotally, you know, that those the the frequency of those emails and phone calls from those companies has not decreased at all no nope. no nope. and uh it actually yeah. may it actually may increase because they know you have an aggregation so typically they they target towns where they know aggregate and they try to say to people oh we're with the aggregation or we're acting on behalf of the town supplier it, it, may, it gives them almost an easier in but it's it's a massive concern it's a massive complaint from our seniors because because Oh, yeah. it, take, it, it takes a while to, to discern that this isn't somebody you want to talk to. Um, and uh, it takes time and effort to do that. So I got calls from people who said this sounds too good to be true, just like all those other programs that I get emails about. And, exactly. And, and I agree, but this one is okay. And that's yeah. why we're doing it. And, but that was my point. A, more of a dog and pony show up front would have been helpful, I think. And, and if we didn't have the pandemic and all of that, we yep. would have. But, yep. but you know, we, we did our survey and we sent everybody letters. And I have had people calling me and saying that their contract is ending with their whoever their provider is. And, you know, and they ask questions like, did you guys actually finish the aggregation? And you know, what's the price and can I join? And I, I hope now and then those people are joining. I believe they are, but it's not my business. I don't know, but, uh, but, but people know about it and they're, they're joining after their contract ends, but they couldn't join until their contract ends or they would have taken a big penalty. 
So everything I know about this, Phil, is that this is a good thing. I get that. I get it. I feel the gentle touch of the Bob Armstrong pressure. No. <laughs> no, no. It's, yeah, yeah. it's okay. Good. It's a good thing. Good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and, and I, I'm happy people are skeptical, you know. Look at it with us. And not yeah. every town we approached joined. There were some towns in Franklin County that we went to and said, this is a good thing. And they said, nah, we're not going to do it. Yeah. Whereas a town in Hampshire County came and said, can we join with you guys? We don't want to do it alone. And there's no reason why that couldn't work too. So anyway, I'm going to make a motion that we sign both the MOU and the administrative form, uh, you know, that Conway will participate in this uh, low income uh, program. I'll second that. Thank you, Erica. I'll vote aye. I will as well. You're waving your hand, Phil. Is that an aye? I'll say aye. Oh, okay. We're unanimous. That's great. So uh, the, I'm sure the forms will be on the table in town hall and we can go in and sign them. Yeah. I feel even better. Yeah. If, I feel even better if, if Colonial Power ever wants to post some financial reports on their website. But, um, that that would be even better for us. Well, um, well, we'll uh, it'll take a little bit of time to uh, fill in all the blanks for uh, Conway on the form, but uh, it shouldn't take too long. So, uh, so the forms will be here soon. Okay, you'll let us know. Yeah. Wonderful. Anything further, Mr. Armstrong? Anything we? You need no, to this is great. Thank Perfect. you very much. Thanks for stopping in. Appreciate hey. it. Mr. Hutchinson, anyway. if you need any a hand with those documents, happy to help out. Let us know. Thank you. You are. Okay. Have Thank a great you. evening. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Bye. So we have a few new business items, like uh, we're approving Michelle Tory to the Open Space Committee. So. So moved. We all know Michelle. We didn't yeah. require her. And thank you. He seconded. It's moved. Yeah. I'll yeah. vote aye. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's for a term ending June 30th, 2024. This being past the midpoint of the year and it being a three year term. So we'll do that and say thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Tom has on the agenda here uh, approving the renewal of the Comcast cable license. So once again, the cable license isn't ready. And Tom has it on here in anxious anticipation that one of these days it actually will be, but, but it's not ready yet. So we're going to table that until it's actually ready. And then Tom's going to have a discussion of the town warrant. Yeah, I wanted to, uh, to bring to your attention a couple of things that I'm proposing um, this year. Uh, See, I, I think there will be general agreement. Um, one of them is is what is currently Article 23, and that is uh, the language is based on Buckland, which uh, did this, I think, last year, uh, just to change officially change the uh, name Board of Selectmen to Select Board. Uh, it seems to be a trend. It's now the Massachusetts Select Board Association instead of the Massachusetts Selectmen's Association. So uh, trying to get some uh, gender neutral language in here and hoping that you agree with, uh, with that. Tom, was there anything on that about, did, I thought that there was, uh, that it required a separate act of the legislature for each town to change it. For towns that have a charter, um, that's the case. Uh, we just have bylaws. Okay, good. And, uh, and the other change um, is uh, at the bottom right hand of the screen, um, it, uh, the, the very last line used to say, given under our hands, say this 12th day of April, the year of our Lord, 2021. Um, 
I've uh, I've proposed taking out the phrase in the year of our Lord um, uh, to uh, encourage uh, religious diversity as well, or even non-religious diversity. Uh, I, I assume there's no legal requirement of having something like that. No. Normal flowery way of saying it. Yeah, well, you know, it is traditional, and I know some people like tradition, um, but there may be other traditions that they like that uh, would uh, would counter this particular tradition. So uh, just um, putting that out there and not planning to make a big deal out of it, but there it is. I've always wondered about that myself, because there is a Hebrew calendar that's different, and there is a Muslim calendar that's different. And I've always thought, uh, you know. And, and I did get a complaint. Hmm. Ah, interesting. So, but this is going to be in town meeting, so people will have, we, we get a chance to talk about it. Well, I'm not sure anyone will notice. <laughs> hey, hey. Really? <laughs> Erica will notice. <laughs> so the, the, those are the two main changes otherwise it's just a skeleton it has some templates in it in case some articles come along um, to fit those I believe the planning board is going to have some uh, articles so that's going to be a bylaw change uh, how many they have depends on how late town meeting is. Um, and I know we have, uh, we, we have that on, on uh, up for discussion of uh, joint finance committee meeting. Um, so I don't want to say too much about that yet, but uh, uh, it, everything that's in, oh, I don't know, if you got the um, electronic version of the draft warrant, everything that's in red is draft. Um, so all the, the dates are in draft. Um, and as, aside from that, it's just sort of plugging in the money items. Uh, we're going to hear later from the uh, the Capital Improvements Planning Committee about their ideas for uh, handling the, uh, the paving. Um, there's some uh, progress made on that in a couple of different directions. Um, so... Really, those were the only changes. Uh, you know, they're they're kind of structural changes, um, and uh, so I thought I'd just mention those before we got into the the other substantive stuff that we're going to get into. Okay. So, Erica, you know, since this is your first uh, go around of this, there will be a great many drafts that Tom is going to put up at probably every one of our select board meetings between now and town meeting. So, so don't get yeah. too wedded to the article numbers or whatever. They will they will change regularly. And so just, this is like the point of process. Does the finance committee make a recommendation about every single one of the of the articles that have anything to do with money? Yep. Okay. I should let Alan answer that. He's here, but yeah. So at some point, right near the end, we will be voting on our recommendation of whether we recommend the articles, and they'll be taking theirs, and that's where you see all of those two, four, one opposed, or one abstain, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But not for a while. You know, it, it, it'll settle down quite a bit between now and then. So this isn't anything to vote on. This is just... Uh, taking a first look at it. Yeah. So it's 6.25. Alan, how are we doing? Alan, you might be muted. You might not be there. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, hi, it's... Alan. There you hi, are. hi, Bob. Hi, Tom. Hi, Arga. Hi, so Hi. you're the lone man standing so far? Oh, my goodness. 
I'm a lone person. No longer gender neutral language from now on, Bob. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's okay. <laughs> I guess so, well, though I, I am expecting at least two others. Great. Well, I, I, I will say, though, if you're just looking at, at the, the rough draft of the, of the warrant, I'll, I'll just go ahead and or early in making my annual request to, to do the groupings of the school warrants and the highway warrants together, just because we always end up doing it that way anyway, and this way it'll save a motion and a vote and, and all that. So, um, Well, the two highway articles are together. There's number oh, good. seven, so they're, they're right next to each other right yeah. now. But they'll be they'll change between yep. now and then. So why don't we go on to uh, the stuff that we have scheduled for after the uh, the joint meeting with the finance committee, and we'll get back to them when when more finance folks show up. Um, so how about items not anticipated? I know that, that that Erica, you sent in something, and I'm wondering if you could just talk to it a little bit, and then we can we can actually vote on it. Right. So, um, Life Path is um, applying to the AARP. Um, it's, it's to the AARP's network of um, age-friendly communities, and we'd already. Um, indicated our support for joining Life Path local age-friendly communities project. So they're really just looking for, it was, it was, a, it was a template letter that um, Newer had sent to me that's basically just the towns that are participating in Life Path's age-friendly communities project. They're just asking if those towns will send a letter of support that they can provide to the AARP so that they can then join AARP's larger network of age-friendly communities wouldn't restrict us or require us to, you know, pay f dues or. No, know. and we, and we've already indicated our support for participating in the, our, our, our local um, Franklin County and greater Fawbin project. Um, but as uh, you know, Tom had asked whether there's any urgency to this and there isn't, I think, you know, we were just one of the first um, select boards who, um, you know, indicated support for the project. So I think that's, you know, why, <laughs> why we're being asked to, you know, one of the first, communities to provide a letter of support for them. Uh, great. So, uh, we, but we, as, we, as, as I said, I don't think that there's no real urgency. So I don't think it's something that, you know, that we have to necessarily do now or provide now. Um, but it's, uh, you know, I just wanted to, to get that out there since sure. it was something that Noor had sent last week. Well, it's, it's just nice to have things on the agenda uh, ahead of time so that if somebody wanted to come in, you know, and promote right. it, let alone speak against it, they would have a chance. Um, and we do have this on the agenda, items not anticipated, but we try not to use it unless it's urgent. And so that's great that there's no urgency and yes. we can do that. Yeah, exactly. I think totally, um, we can put it put it on another, you know, subsequent agenda. Um, and, you know, our local council on aging might want to um, have a heads up about it as well. So Yeah, and I think Tom has it on the agenda for next week already okay great uh, you know i mean or it's on his collection of things in that basket so and 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 you sent us a copy of what what we're going to sign i believe uh yeah and that was just a template i mean i think it's really boilerplate we just you know pop in you know the name the select board of conway basically yeah yeah or yeah. you know it's bit, but the general idea is there great uh, uh let's see tom do you want to Who's here? Do you want to do your update? Hey, Tom, are you there? So, Tricia, what we're doing is we don't have oh, a quorum for the sorry. for the finance committee yet. So, I apologize, and and we will get there eventually. You didn't call in. Oh, wait oh, a minute. Do we have a quorum now? Who's here? Steve is here. I think just Steve here. and I are here uh, so far. But, uh, okay. Roy is due any minute. Maybe, uh, maybe Roy will sit out. I'm going to text Roy right now. Who is, who is 9374? 
Oh, that's me. That's, uh, that's uh, yes. Oh, yeah. right, right. Sorry, sorry. Is Tom, you're reading two thirty-five, or is that who's who's? Is that you, Ron? I yes, think that's that, me. Hi, Ron. It's Ron. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> With somebody in town hall. <laughs> Great. So, Ron, we don't have a quorum yet. So, 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 Tom, could you do your update? Yeah, thanks. And I'm I'm unmuted now, which helps. That helps. Yeah. Um, for uh, for committee news, uh, committee news. Uh, at this point, it does not look as though the Community Preservation Committee has any projects, though the Stone House project from last year may come back. Uh, I've scheduled a joint meeting with the Council on Aging at the, at, uh, the February 22nd meeting to discuss their operations and the history of Conway's choices regarding regional senior center affiliation. I've invited Lynn Hanley who wrote a letter suggesting considering formal relations with the Shelburne Falls Senior Center to be present as well. Uh, Lee Whitcomb is also planning to be on the February 22nd call to discuss her shelving system proposal. Since the proposal met with some sticker shock, I thought I'd have her explain what it entails. And Janet Shays is organizing a forest and trails working group within the open space committee. Cool. Uh, just, a, just a note that if it's a town group, they should be appointed either to the open space committee or their own group. In departmental news, I was able to help resolve a neighborhood issue with Nexamp, a complaint that someone was using their driveway to turn around and dump some snow in the process. And I found them very responsive. Uh, Representative Lay and Senator Hines reach out to schedule some time to speak, and I have tentatively scheduled them for the March 1st select board meeting. Uh, we got a suggested message for our reverse 911 system for vaccines for those over 75. I passed it on to our emergency management director, but note that it is a very targeted message and that our call lists include a lot of people who would not be affected. That's it for me. Just on on, on that, but so I that that uh, twenty the twenty one thousand shelving system. We didn't talk about this last week, but that would be a special piece of furniture specially installed. That would be a capital item. Uh, um, feels like it might be. Yeah, I yeah. agree with you. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. So, so since the capital committee is uh, is uh, is is on. Maybe they can speak to that. Well, we'll be we'll be having another capital committee meeting coming up. We haven't scheduled okay. it yet, depending on what we learned today. And so this is a, exactly what we were thinking about. So yeah. So I'm not prepared to talk about it today, but but we will. Okay. We'll come back. Uh, we have a quorum now of the finance committee. Great. So we'll we'll call the finance, or you can call the finance committee to order. What go have at it? I, I call the finance committee to order, and, and hey. uh, Tom and, and Ron, I guess you have the floor. Okay. So so, do you have any general update you want to do, Tom? I just wanted to make a note that. Um, uh, all of the three other frontier towns have scheduled their town meetings later than usual. Um, Deerfield and Sunderland are scheduled for Saturday, June 12th, and Whiteley is scheduled for Tuesday, June 15th. So uh, Conway might want to pick um, the Monday before those meetings or during those meetings or after those meetings. Uh, which would make it uh, the first or second week in June, first, second, or third week in June, instead of the first week, uh, or rather the second week in May. That would be about a month later than we usually have it. Um, that would help uh, especially Frontier get their budget in a more refined situation. Um, so that's something that uh, we should, dis we should uh, discuss going forward. Uh, and... Uh, yeah. 
And, and there's an additional reason for that too, Tom, that, that the, the boards of health of those three towns have been instrumental in helping to select those dates. Um, and that's based on the, the, the anticipated schedule of vaccination and until they get to the stage four, which is now expected to be, you know, uh, you know May and June. So um, in, in, in our state. So that's, you know, th there is there is sort of a whole community safety aspect to waiting another month that should be a pronounced, uh, uh, you know, that it it would be safer for people to wait a month. It would seem. Our, our Board of Health, to my knowledge, does not wait in on it, but I don't know. So you think by June 15th, we'll be on stage four for vaccinations? Yes. There's, they're, they're saying in May we're going to be in stage four. No, um, and, you know, it, uh, I don't know. I don't what know. But they talked they, about is where we're going to hold our town meeting or, you know. Well, that's a, another thing. June, June makes that the uh, semi outdoor indoor thing more, more, uh, you know, the temp temperate wise, it's, it's a much better than, you know, chances are better than May 10th. Yeah, it's the longest days of the year, I mean, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So the what, flip what side of that is that, you know, we have more, well, you know, one of the things we did when we reorganized our town government six years ago or whatever is we, we went from being the first of our four towns to do our budget to the last. And, in, 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 and the significance of that is that the first two towns, if it the weighted the weight of our frontier school budget, it's Deerfield plus one town is a majority, and then it's passed. So almost every year since we passed that government, that our town reorganization, our frontier vote has been irrelevant um, because the budget would pass before or you know without us. If um, so, so there is wisdom to being at the front of the line again. Um, because you know we we do get I, I can tell you just from being on the budget committee when we were at the front of the line, I, it, I, you know, um, we 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 had more influence a little bit more. But if we voted, let's say, against it, and the next two towns, three towns voted for it, it yeah, we become just as irrelevant. I mean, the order doesn't really matter other than psychologically. That's one way to look at it. That's one. Hey, Ron, way. Let me just go ahead. Let me just uh, put in a, a couple of thoughts. One is that before you pick a date, we should check in with the town clerk and the moderator. Uh, and the second is that the twenty-first is actually the very last day we can have it, because our election is three days after our town meeting, and if we wait till the following week, um, the next the next Thursday is a um, is July 1st, and it's not in this fiscal year. And the election still has to happen within the fiscal year. So I would suggest um, the week before that at the latest. But again, checking in with the town clerk and the moderator before making any decision. Ron, would it be possible to have it in the garage again? Or is that so full of stuff now that it might not work? That won't work. Yeah. Uh, no, there's way too much stuff. I. <laughs> the only thing that we might have available is the new building, depending on where that is. But I can't answer that right now because um, that's kind of wow. at, at a standstill right at the moment. So. Yeah. And it's no, not nowhere near as big as the other building either. Yeah. Okay. Go. You know, being in the gym again is not out of the question. You know, we're, we're taking the gym for a test drive for the town caucus, right? Uh, um, yeah, but that's 30 people. <laughs> right. But, and, but right now, but, but I, I, I did hear that they're, you know, because it's a posted number, so you're allowed 25% of the posted number right now, but they're going to up that to 50% soon. So I um, I think it's already at 40%. All right. Starting this week. All right. So, but, you know, if, if they say it's okay, you know, if the state, if the Board of Health come out and say it's okay, then it's, 
Yeah. That, that's a really good thing. Yeah. Well, it's not a good thing if people don't come. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good thing if it's not okay, and they say well, it's okay. Uh, well, yeah. you, this yeah. is, we're still, you know, we're still walking on uh, hot coals, if you will. Yeah. Uh, remains to be seen what's going to be around. I'm disappointed to hear the, uh, you know, the, uh, the same same building we were in last year is not uh, is not available. But so I have it outside. Just have it outside in the open sky somewhere, provided it with a rain date. We we had a plan last year to have it out on the playground, right, of the grammar school, and mm -hmm. that that yeah. was still work. Yeah. Say, uh, speaking of the town caucus, um, I can't recall offhand. Did you uh, formally set the town caucus for March first yet? Because if not, I would suggest that as an item not anticipated. We don't have the warrant to sign yet, but if you approved it now, uh, I'm, because next week is a holiday, it won't be two weeks before the um, mm. before the date. Well, I so I, I would have next week, but maybe not, and we should okay. do it again. We could do it again. Um, well, if you have, uh, it should be in the minutes then. I have a vague recollection of something signing something to do with it, but I don't remember. Hey, no, the, she, hey, we, we don't have the warrant yet. Okay. I, I don't think we have the warrant. So. Well, why don't I make a motion that we have the town caucus at March 1st? Is that the date, Tom? Yeah. Uh, Monday. Yes. Uh, what time does it start? Late. After our select board meeting, I think they still have it start. I think it's still they still have it starting at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, I yeah. think, but don't quote me on that either. So let's say eight o'clock, March first, in the Conway Grammar School cafeteria. No, in the gymnasium. Yeah, I, but but I that I we may I didn't the town clerk asked that it be moved up a half an hour or something. I don't remember. This was a while ago we talked about it. Yeah, I, I don't think you, you have to set the time. You can just say as 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 uh, proposed by the town clerk. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I do too. So I'll make a motion that we hold the Conway Caucus in the Conway Gymnasium on March 1st. And the time set by the town clerk. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm in favor. Yeah, and with and with the continuing permission of the Conway Board of Health. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks. We had discussed it before, but not voted on it. Uh huh. So this will help. Thank you. Great. So I heard a second from Erica, and I'll vote aye. Yes. 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 I hear an uh, aye all around. So that's good. Thank. Good thinking, Tom. Yeah. So, so th those are your your comments, uh, Tom. Before uh, and you know, the, to open the finance committee meeting. Yes, thank you. So, the the hearings that we have scheduled are to go over the two. Bob, could I interrupt for a minute? What's that? Could I interrupt for a minute, Bob? Sure. Yeah. I, I just wanted to ask. There was something in the last week that the finance committee has not met since then but something in the last week that Tom Hutchinson is possibly taking a new job. Is that right? That's or right. am I just dreaming? Is uh, I'll Dalton be making an announcement that? later in the meeting. Oh, I should have made that announcement as part of my update. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I did. So how long are you going to be with us? <laughs> well, it, it's contingent on contract negotiations, which will probably take another week or two. Uh, and then it's a 60 day notification period. So are you going to make it through the town meeting? No. So we're going to have to introduce a new town administrator, this whole process, not finish up this town meeting. I would sure like to see if you couldn't stay. We have the meeting in some way that will accommodate your 60 day window. 
you know, Steve, I mean, that's that's a good point. You know, another way of looking at that would be to trade some of the 60 day window for further availability, including a town meeting. Um, further availability? Philip? Yeah, for, for further ab availability, including a town meeting in exchange for some of the 60 days. Ah, OK. Um, so some way to this is an agenda on. item next week. There you go. This is on the agenda next week. The second right. date for the for the town meeting is that next week. So to talk about the transition. Okay. Well, I just like to go on record to say that I'm uh, I like to see you stay through this first uh, for this budget because this is a there's some history here. So anyway, as a new person on the committee. Okay, I'm done. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, so um, um, uh, Trish is here and Roy's here from the Capital Improvements Committee. And we met last week and uh, we talked about Ron and Ron's here and we talked about Ron's two requests. He sent in the only two requests that he had uh, for capital items. And yes, I didn't, I mean, we didn't get a re official request about shelving, but we should talk to Lee about that. Um, so Ron is requesting just two things. One is a, a scheduled replacement of what he would refer to as a heavy duty truck or a heavy truck. Um, one of the large trucks that the town has for plowing and, and hauling and whatever. And, uh, and it's, on our schedule, we had this as a $240,000 item, and Ron has lowered that to a $220,000 item. Um, and that's because he's going to be buying a, the, you can now get these trucks with a, with a plow that really replaces the normal wing plow that these large trucks can have. And so it costs, it costs less to install a wing plow. No, no. Real plow. You're, you're misspeaking. Bob, oh, you're misspeaking there. With that was I was talking about the loader on that plow. This this truck here is not planned to have a wing plow on it. Oh, okay. No, this was you know, so you're getting and, it with no four wheel drive. Was that the one? Right. No four wheel drive because the reason we get four wheel drive is because of the wing plow setup. So this truck will just be a regular two wheel drive truck with just a front plow. Yeah. That's where the difference is. And from what we, the last two trucks that we've, we've gotten. Um, the, what you're talking about with the front, the, the plow taking the place of the wing, that was a, something I was talking about with the loader. Yeah, I remember that, right. Okay. So, I'm just trying to make it clear. I don't want to mislead anybody as to uh, um, with your comment there. I just want to make you. it clear. That, yeah, okay. <laughs> correct me. I, really, I mean, that's, that's great to have you on. It's great. Yep. Good. Um, so originally in our schedule, we had a large truck similar to this that we passed at town meeting last year. And we also had two smaller trucks a 2014 Volvo, a, a, no, a, yeah, 2014 Volvo compact loader, and a and a, a and a 2015 Volvo loader, and uh, they didn't get past the town meeting last year. But and, uh, but the larger uh, and the larger truck did get past the town meeting last year. And so that was purchased. So we we purchased a new truck since town meeting. That's right. So, so, so Ron could explain this better than me, and you should fill in and tell me what I got wrong. But when when Ron became road boss, the he he was um, unhappy with the way emissions controls on these very large trucks were designed, and advised the town to hold off on buying any of these large trucks for as long as possible. So that's why last year we replaced the 1997 truck. And this year he's looking to replace a 1998 truck. And these trucks are definitely at what you would call the end of life or mm -hmm. far past it. And uh, 
Um, and 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 Ron has confidence now that the emissions have been have been designed better in these newer trucks, and now it makes sense for us to purchase these new trucks. So it's unfortunate that we have a number of them that we're purchasing close together. Normally they'd be spread out a little more, uh, but we've held off as long as possible on buying them. So this is another large truck. Now, uh, Ron has seen the truck that we bought last year and it's at the dealer, but it takes a very long time for the trucks to get ordered and to come in and then to get mm -hmm. modified with all of the special equipment that you need, like a wing plow or, or a, whatever they come with. And, and so we don't ha even have that truck yet. And this truck will take another year for it to come in and we'll be using the old truck for a whole nother year until it actually comes in. And so, so as a, as a committee, we talked about these trucks and we all felt that this truck really does need to be replaced. Um, the other two vehicles that we didn't order last year, and the other three similar vehicles, 2014, 16, 15 vintage vehicles, smaller Ram four-wheel drive trucks or whatever, uh, Ron has postponed buying all of those and treating them the way that we used to treat vehicles when we drove them to the end of their life. And the history on that is that a few years ago, the Ron proposed to the Capital Improvement Committee that we should be trading in standard ordinary vehicles that a lot of people, that there's a big market for and have good trade-in values. We should be trading them in at five years old or so. We can get very good trade-in for them and that there's special programs for, uh, for municipalities to, to purchase brand new vehicles and that it was, but it would save Conway money if we consistently traded in these vehicles that were nowhere near their end of life, that had good trade-in values. Mm -hmm. And last year at town meeting, the town didn't, and, and the year before too, but the, the town has not bought into that argument yet. And the town has the choice to just say no. And they said that last year and Ron you know, believes they would say that again this year. And part of that's due to the pandemic and part of that's just due to Conway's long history of believing the right, the best thing to do is to drive vehicles until they're at their end of life. So all five of those vehicles, the two from last year and the three that Ron had originally put on the schedule for this year, he's postponed and will adjust the schedule and we'll put them out in four or five more years. And I thought, you know, the other thing, Bob, is that the, um, it, I, the, the previous chairperson of the Capitol Committee made multiple valiant attempts uh, on the town meeting floor to persuade the town of the wisdom of a capital plan. And, um, you know, and, and, and he, you know, he laid out the math repeatedly. And to me, the math is pretty compelling, you know, that, that a capital plan makes sense. Um, and I, I, this is just one of the, I've always been fascinated by this, by this issue in this town, just that um, it, it seems like th there, are, there are a lot of people that feel like they have expertise in this subject matter. And the, the fellows that stand up against the wall and say, how many miles are on that, you know, seem, seem to have repeatedly won the day in terms of persuading public opinion. Um, and, and, you know, I think that the, the, I don't know in what format, but you know, it took us 45 years to get highway garages done. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe it's, a, it's, a, it's like a long-term project, but that you ought to think about chiseling away at public opinion every year and seeing if you can persuade people. It's just going to take time. But, well, we have a capital plan to the extent that we have a spreadsheet and we, you know, of when we anticipate we're going to be needing to buy vehicles. And I probably should have passed it out, but 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 I haven't finished updating it, moving these five vehicles out into sometime in the future. Now that we haven't, we're also working on that capital plan to have it include buildings and and roads. Hmm. Yeah, but you're right. One step, we're 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 working on it. Yep. Yep. But it's it's just been a sort of a long thing where um, we've been unable. Yeah, it's just. 
the boats haven't been particularly close either. <laughs> nope. Um, <laughs> so we're really hoping that this year the town will see fit to purchase another one of these aged, you know, vehicles to replace this aged truck. The other capital proposal that Ron gave us was was to pave a section of road. Well, do we finish talking about this? So, uh, do you have any questions? Sure. Yeah, I have a question. Great. What is this? What is two hundred twenty thousand? I see trucks all day long in the business that I have, but we don't see them that high. But I'm just curious, what this is? There any trade-in value on this, or what? On the old truck, the nineteen ninety-eight truck. So, Ron, you want to answer that? Um, Great. Yeah, the, the the truck that will be trading in has a value of somewhere around twenty five hundred to seventy five hundred, depending on the moment. I mean, we can't. They won't give me a price right now. It has to. The trade in has to. The price is at when it happens. Okay. Um, only because of the current market. Nobody will give me, they'll tell me $1,000 right now if I if hold, try to hold them to something. Um, I'm, I'm guessing somewhere around $2,500. So, so basically really the trade-in is okay. it's really How nothing. The price yeah. of the new truck? How come it's come down? What's that? How about the price of the new truck? You said it's gone down from 240 to 220 Is that Yes, damage? we were okay. doing it's because it's not going to be a four-wheel drive truck and it's not going to have a wing plow set up on it. When, when I did the cost things, I wasn't paying attention there on a um, different type of truck. It's the same truck, same, basically the same type of truck. It just it, it has a few different things that it won't have a few things that the other two trucks had. You I just want to realize I mean, that uh, cutting the uh, capital request down to one item from four will reduce the length of town meeting probably by an hour. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> or longer. Steve, does that answer your question about what type well, of truck or do you want more details? I was just curious why you're going from four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive. Isn't that useful because, around here? Well, it depends. It's because of where the truck will... Basically, its plow route doesn't warrant a wing plow because of the roads that it will be on. Um, That's not what I asked. I asked about um, four wheel drive, Ron. Four wheel drive. What? What? What's if you knock twenty thousand off and get don't get four wheel drive? That sounds like um, Pennywise found foolish, but I don't know. Around these. No. Well, because. It, it, and the truck is going to be more designed for hauling more than, because um, we do a, we do our own sand and material hauling, and the truck's going to be more designed that way than for the actual plowing with the wing plow and stuff. So that's where that's all coming from. Um, well, Ron, you're saying when it has a front plow, it doesn't need four wheel drive. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that there won't be times that we have issues with it. It's the same with the four-wheel drive. But um, when you put the wing plow on it, the weight distribution, become, because of our hills, becomes an issue with traction. So that's where the four-wheel drive comes in with the wing plow. And also this other truck, the, the route that it typically does is not an issue as far as the steep hills of plowing. Are all of our trucks and there's more four wheel drive? Excuse me. Are all the trucks we purchased now four wheel drive trucks? Are they all? I, I still didn't hear trucks. you. Are they all four wheel drive? Are our trucks all four wheel drive now? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Yes, no. it is. Nope. What's that? So how many are, how, sorry, many are? how many are, how many are, I don't know, I, I seem to have problems sound right, Ron. how many are, how many aren't? Right now we have two that are and two that aren't. 
And that's sufficient for our large trucks. We have four large trucks. We have four large trucks. One's a spare. We bought that several years ago to for a backup truck so that when something happens, we have another truck that can handle the situations. So this will be the third truck. We won't be the, the last truck, the 2004, we're not going to be, there's no plan to replace that truck. We're just going to be using that as a spare. So we will have two four-wheel drive trucks with wings and two with just front plows. We, when I when I first took over, we had no trucks with wing plows. That's something that I've done to make things more efficient. Ron, are you intending to use only the Volvo loader with the wing plow now? Is that your plan? To, uh, what do you mean to use it? Well, the wing plow, you're going to use pretty much stick with the Avalo loaders it's to, use with, to use with the wing plows. The vo one Volvo loader has a wing plow on it. Um, so that's going to be your going to when that loader. Is that it? It's used in the wintertime for snow removal, yes. Right, thank you. Uh, I, I I don't think I understand what your question was. I just know you like to use the wing plow, so I think the wing plow, you prefer to use the Volvo loader going forward. That's why we're replacing uh, four-wheel drive trucks with two-wheel drive trucks, right? I think that's what we're all no. trying to understand. No, we're replacing a current truck that is just a two-wheel drive truck with no wing plow. I'm, I'm replacing it in kind a two-wheel drive truck with no wing plow it will just have a front plow on the front okay thank you steve did you get your question asked it looked like you were still shaking your head or uh something this is the arcane uh discussion but um i'm not going to get into it i I no, go ahead. Uh, I just don't know about trucks that much. I know this uh, expensive truck, but it seems like you'd want to have use of it in all situations if you have an emergency, um, snow emergency or whatever. I mean, we get tossed more around. Last year, we didn't have that much, I, I don't think, but this year, we're already having enough, having a lot. So I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, Steve, I think, I think if I heard you hear you correctly, you're saying, uh, don't you want to get get a truck that has the most versatility? Uh, exactly. You know, rather exactly. than uh, okay. But I, on the other hand, I think I hear Ron saying, and you could correct me if I'm different if I'm wrong, that not only is the four wheel a little cheaper uh, down the road, the four wheel. I mean, I mean, the two wheels a little cheaper, but down the road, the two wheel is probably a lot cheaper to maintain and and even run. Pro probably, I'm just making that assumption. I don't, I don't know. Um, you, you are correct. Yeah. You are correct. Yeah. So. But, and there's no reason to have the four wheel drive. I mean, we have two to cover our situation. I mean, it it doesn't make any sense to have to. Th have that extra um, expense so that in case something happens. I mean, there's always other ways of okay, that's, getting that's through the situation. That's important to hear. So if one of those okay. four wheels goes down, uh, you have other ways to, to deal with it. Correct. I mean, it, it, it could be as simple as putting a set of chains on a two-wheel drive truck. Right. For the right. you know for the moment, right. or using the loader in where the truck normally plows, or what, things like that. I mean, mm -hmm. that, we we do that now, anyways. But 
Yeah. But Ron, I believe in we adapt to the situations. In okay. 2020, we bought a four-wheel drive, a big four-wheel drive truck with a wing plow. And in 2021, we bought another one. So th those are our two, and they're 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 reasonably new trucks. But they're not. They new. are new. Like, yes. Are they, have they been delivered? Well, yet? one of them's not. Okay. One of them's been delivered. The other one has not been delivered yet. But when will that be here, Ron? It'll be a couple more months. Probably they probably won't make it for the winter. But we still have we're still using the truck that it's going to replace. So. Yeah. So, so those are two four wheel drive trucks, and we're going to be replacing a two wheel drive truck with a two wheel drive truck. It's okay. Correct. Okay. Means, what's what's the normal uh, number of trucks per mile of road for a town? What's what's the rate that you? Which way, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure DLR has something else, like you know, deal whatever. But, um, I'm sure they have statistics about this, but I. Trisha, did you have data like this in situate? No, it's really defined by the number of roads that you have and the type of roads that you're maintaining, whether they're asphalt or dirt or sink gravel. So again, it's dictated by the, the number of roadways and the type of equipment you need to plow them or maintain them and the type of road work. If you're contracting out a lot of your road work, you need less vehicles. If you're doing a lot of it in-house, which we do a lot of, you have more vehicles, but there's no hard and fast rule. How long, Ron, how long have we had four big trucks? Or three plus a spare? Since 2014. In 2014, town meeting approved buying a used truck as a spare. Well, for so that we ended up with a spare. We was having a lot of trouble with one of our trucks going being broke down all the you know breaking down during a snowstorm and stuff. And uh, town meeting allowed you know we we bought a new bought, bought a used truck in fourteen. That actually was the first truck that we had with a wing plow. And so that was the 2004 then, truck? That was the 1998 auto car that we replaced oh. last year. I mean, it, it don't make any sense maintenance-wise and, you know, wear and tear on a truck if, if the four-wheel drive is going to be so minimal that we would need it to to buy that it also just it makes a lot of moving extra parts in the truck to have issues down the road especially if you're going to be using it for using it more for hauling and things like that it doesn't really make sense to go that route I'm just trying to be practical on what we have for equipment to do the jobs that we need done. So are you good, Steve? Yeah. I, I don't want to, you know, if you have issues, we this is a great time to talk about them. I, well, I'm, I got one other question that's sort of irrelevant, but I'll ask it anyway. Electric trucks? <laughs> Have you looked at that market at all, Ron? I don't believe there's a market out there yet for them. Okay, that's all I ask you. I ask you if you looked you, at you it. You mean, Ron, you don't think they make them yet? Not for general consumption. What is our plan to cut over to electric in the long term? Well, they got to make them so that the batteries aren't an issue in the wintertime because in 
our, my business is winter times are one of our most important times. And right now, with the way the batteries are in the cold weather, I mean, they got to get a lot better with that. Ron, I, I, I'm I not saying it. I don't drive a truck, but I drive a Tesla, and I have for a year and a half. Been through two two winters. I've never had any problem with batteries in the cold. So I just like you to uh, continue looking at it as far as yep. going forward. Look at the what's available because many many big Amazon on down are buying fleets of trucks and that's going to be more readily available we should make a move sometime do we just keep replacing gas powered trucks over time or what oh I'm, it's not something I mean I have looked into what's out there I mean I'm not saying that we won't I just feel right now that well there is really is nothing available for our type of truck that we need i mean okay your car doesn't have all the things that you need to run plows and sanders and things like that so that's probably a good thing for you in the winter time but i mean you go down a road and you're plowing snow and you're sanding and the truck stops on you because you got no battery what do you do then it's they're not they're not there yet it's like the emissions was five, six years ago. I mean, it, it, it it's coming, but it's not there yet. I will definitely look into it. You know, when you know when the time's right. I have no issue with electric. I expect there'll be some, you know, electric trucks. You know, like. Ford F one fifties size trucks next next year. Yeah, that's that's what they're talking about. Yeah. But I think the uh the the take a beating kind of trucks like we we use in this town are ways yet uh from getting there, I think. You yeah. know, I mean Yeah, they are. And they we may have they may be hydrogen powered before they're electric powered. We don't know. We gotta wait and see. There'll probably be a an era where we overlap, where we've got some electric vehicles and we have, uh, or, or, or we have some non-fuel, non-petrol fuel vehicles and, uh, and the other kind of vehicles, whatever they turn out to be. Mm -hmm. so. so. So the next project we have is a paving project. If we can go, go on, is that okay? Yeah, we need to move, move on yeah. to there because that's, this is more complicated, I think, than the it, truck. It's, it's probably more complicated <laughs> than the truck project, and yes. but maybe not. So okay. we spent a long time also at our meeting talking about this project. I'll try to summarize it, and Ron can correct me. But basically, Ron is asking for the town to pass some capital money from wherever it comes from uh, to use it to pave a section of road in town that is in rough shape. And that section of road is basically the Shelburne Falls Road. And we can talk about all the reasons why vehicle traffic has really increased in Conway and, and or why we don't have enough money. So typically we only have spent our chapter 90 money to repave roads. And we typically get about $260,000 from the state for chapter 90. And uh, the cost of paving, the cost of, of uh, asphalt has gone up a lot lately. And the cost of the, the rubberized chip and seal has gone up to where it now costs 100 to $150,000 a mile to resurface the road. So even if we- uh, You're not- Go ahead. You, you're not- you're not exactly right there. Okay. But that's just for that's just for the asphalt hot mix. That's not you're not including the cost of the chip seal because that's on top of that. Well, when I, you I ask me for 100, the price, hundred thousand, hundred thousand a mile for two for and the half asphalt. Asphalt, yeah. yeah. For two and a half inches of asphalt. Asphalt. Yeah. yeah. That's not the reclamation, and that's not the chip seal. 
Yeah. I I thought I explained that. Yeah. So that's why I said one hundred and fifty thousand. No. So where'd you get the fifty thousand from? <laughs> for, for the pit deal and 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 reclaiming the road. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. You you are. I, I was looking at the wrong number here. You're right. Sorry. So, I apologize. Uh, but so so then yeah, so the, yes, what I said was even if we assume that number is only a hundred thousand, and we know that's that's not the number. Let's say it's one hundred fifty thousand. But to make the math easy, if we assume that number is a hundred thousand, and we have about sixty-five miles of road, so this doesn't include Route One Sixteen, and, and if we take off about. 25 miles of dirt road that we don't have to resurface. So we're down to somewhere around 45, 40 to 45 miles of road that we have to resurface about every 10 years. So that's four and a half miles, five miles of road a year that we have to resurface. If we just think of it as what what is our town responsibility? And if we get 160,000 from the state, if we assume $100,000 a mile, that's only two and a half miles of road that we can do every year. So every year, Ron is scrambling to try to figure out how to find enough money or how to postpone doing roads that are really in rough shape. And he wrote a grant to try to pay for this project, and we didn't get the grant. We could talk about why we didn't get the grant, but we didn't get the grant. And some I, I've, go ahead. I've I've applied for the grant for three years now too. This was the third time we've been not awarded. So the Shelburne Falls Road is probably now about the worst road in Conway, and it's not bad enough yet for us to qualify for the grant. No, not quite. So I, the, so my understanding of this, Bob, is that, um, and, and I remember speaking with Tom about this, with, that T Tom had gotten really good feedback, or Tom and Ron had gotten really good feedback about um, several items that would have vastly strengthened the grant request. And it's very much doable for, ne for um, it, it seemed to me that it would be doable for next year. And that w when you look at the numbers of that grant, um, it's it, just the numbers of applicants versus the numbers awarded. It was like a 20% chance of success. I think Ron but, said there were 37 applicants and they awarded seven of them. Yeah. So that's less than 20%, but, um, uh, but, but what, well, what we, what we did here was that if we could show that, you know, the cost of the police details needed to steer people around it, or the time lost by ambulances who couldn't use the road, we would be much more competitive. So while we know very clearly what we would have to show, I don't believe that we have that situation. Or the number of cars that right. had accidents that we could say were definitely due to the road. And it's not yeah, that, that, that too. Yet. And I hope we don't think that it should become that bad. And, and if you're aware of the road that goes from Conway down into Buckland Center, you can drive anytime you want on a road that probably is that bad. But it's far worse than our road. I've, I've always thought that that was an intentional civic insult to our town. But... <laughs> no, but that road is bad. And that yeah. road is... is they have they've been waiting 10 years for a grant that's going to totally redo that road and uh, they they feel awful that it's in the condition that it's in yeah so ron is ron is looking for some money to repave this road and so the what what ron put it as in his original request that we repave the worst 2 miles of this road but he would even be happy if if we could pave the worst mile of this road, which would go approximately from New Hall Road up and over Dill Hill down to Pine Hill Road. That section of hill is terrible. 
So that would cut down the amount of money we would be requesting from 340 to about 170,000 to, to do this worst section of road. What were what were the concern? What 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 what's the uh, ability to pay of the town for either one versus the need to the need to obtain financing, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, Tom, do you do you have the amount of money that we have in our capital budget? I don't have it sitting in front of me. Uh, capital stabilization, yeah, we've got uh, three hundred and ninety thousand dollars. So the minus two twenty for a truck, right? Right. So that's not enough to. Well, it's it's about enough to do this. We can spend it all. Um, Is it possible to use any out of the general stabilization? We have another 270,000 in general stabilization. And I I am I currently have 150,000 slated from free cash to go into capital stabilization. The thing here though is we have never had paving in the capital plan. The right. last time I looked at right. the capital plan, it it could not absorb uh, this amount and have things work out in future years. Right. Um, now, what that means is that we need to be putting more into the capital plan. So it would not hurt to have more free cash. Well, so, so let me So, oh, so paving ahead, should paving should be part of the capital plan. It's well over the threshold for capital planning. And one of the reasons it should be capital is it's not something that can possibly be addressed within the operating confines of the budget. I think Phil made an excellent point earlier about why the town has been unable to have a viable capital plan. And it's because we continue to try to address capital needs within the operating budget of the town. A town has a capital budget and it has an operating budget. And that operating budget can't possibly meet the capital needs of the town. And we're always just looking at the highway budget, but there's fire needs, there's police department needs, there's infrastructure needs of the town hall and the town hall annex like roofs and HVAC systems and windows and sidewalks and bridges. And one of the challenges the town has faced historically is it doesn't want to borrow. And so what happens is we have this constant catch 22 where we're trying to constantly address some of the needs in the town from an infrastructure and capital point of view when we can't possibly generate enough dollars through the operating budget to address them. And so that's the challenge. And here we have Ron saying, I'm only gonna ask for one truck and one paving project this year but a true capital rolling plan is looking at all the needs in the five-year projection of the town, which Tom's made a good dent in, and we worked on last year on the capital plan to see what was left off last year. What did other departments put on the capital plan for FY 22 and 23 and 24 and 25? So while it's you know the better part of valor for Ron to have only asked for two projects, there were five projects that the highway department had appearing on the FY22 capital budget. And it's incumbent upon the capital planning committee to have looked at all five of those capital requests that appeared for FY22, which we did. But this is the constant challenge the town's going to continue to face at 100,000 or 150,000 per mile per road, you're always going to continue to face those challenges and spending down your capital stabilization, spending free cash, spending general st stabilization for a one-time fiscal year appropriation is neither prudent nor wise. And as we suggested last year, and I would reiterate again, it would behold the town to meet with a financial advisor to look at how other communities finance these big ticket long-term capital items 
to begin to wrap their arms around how we address these big ticket items. I think that was well said, Trish. Yeah, I, I agree. I, you know, I, I for, just from, from, from our frontier budget meetings, um, every year, I, the other three towns in our, in our district always remark about how Conway is so much lower below the levy limit than they are. And we have so much more um, room to borrow than they do. And other, other towns borrow more than we do. That's exactly true. Our neighboring You have a terrible borrow. bond rating. You have a terrible bond rating and you don't even borrow money. <laughs> it's true. No, I don't think we have, we I have a terrible have. bond rating. Well, but here's yes, the we have a terrible bond thing. rating, but I, I think if we went out to borrow again, it would be a much better bond rating because by the since we've since we got that rating, uh, we've done a whole lot with our financial policies and our financial position. Right. So let me let me uh, just um, inform the finance committee that uh, part of our discussion when we when the uh, capital improvements met was really really what this translates into is how much that it's just costing us more to maintain and have decent roads than it used to. And so whereas in the past, so maybe we were able to out of pocket, if you will, um, uh, take care of the roads, that's becoming harder and harder and may not even be possible uh, if you want to keep them at any kind of a, a standard. And that's just, the, that's the plain facts of life, more traffic, different weather, different uh, expectation on the part of uh, folks who live in town, uh, all contribute. And, 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 how the, and how the chapter 90 uh, um, method of funding this by the state just short changes rural towns just from, oh. the, from, from its inception. Yeah, okay, that's true. So what do you do with it? You go borrow. You, the worry comes, you know, you can see people saying that, um, okay, and, and I'm just, I'm playing devil's advocate here. So, okay, so we put us on a 10-year plan, we borrow, we have some, some uh, rotating bonds or what, whatever, however it is we do it, and 10 years from now, it costs yet more to maintain the roads. Yes. And so, so then our borrowing will have to go up even more, but I, you know, that's maybe looking too far out. I, I don't know. Maybe they'll come up with better, better stuff to put on the roads. You're right. I mean, if, if we get enough chapter 90 money to, to surface two and a half miles of road, and we have over four miles of road that we need to surface every year, that would mean borrowing yeah. that money, you know, yeah. in order to do it. And it, to some extent, that means raising taxes or some, you know, that's, I know that's a terrible thing to say, but that money's got to come from somewhere. I, and I don't see any, any way around it. Well, I, so I think this is definitely going to be a topic of uh, discussion at town meeting for sure. Because it, you know, the implications are, are broad. They're not, uh, it's not narrow in scope. There's strong will. pressure on Governor Baker every year to raise the Chapter 90 money. And it hasn't been happening. Well, just and, not, you know, go ahead. Put and that said, for, uh, for capital projects, borrowing can, can have the same kind of uh, deal that, that goes on with debt exclusions. You can have a capital exclusion where you exclude money for capital expenses uh, from proposition two and a half. Well, that's good to know. And, but, but it requires a two thirds vote, of course. But the, um, the, the one thing though, that, the, the one thing that the town does reliably support is the saving of money to do this. Um, e even though the math doesn't really work for that either, it seems like that's the one thing that, um, that, 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 that is reliably supported. And um, I, I don't know. It's so, something like this. If we begin to set up and begin to save, begin, you got to start somewhere. I don't know if they'll go for all of it or or whatever, but you got to start somewhere and address your needs and try at town meeting. 
I think there's probably many people in town who ascribe to that same view in their personal finances. I know I try to put money aside knowing I'm going to have to buy a new vehicle in the future. And then I have that money when I need to buy it and I don't have to borrow it. And I, that means that I don't pay interest on that money and I collect a little bit of interest on it while I'm saving it up. Right. And the, the problem with that is that we don't have enough money to save. The only way we would get that is if we if we had a, a lot more free cash and we were able to put that into capital stabilization every year. And, you know, we could do that if we were a little bit more more sort of generous in the budget and and, you know, said, well, maybe they'll spend this and that sort of thing. But we really just don't have the money to do that now. Well, that's that's a good point, because uh, so you add, at a simple level, you could say, well, just um, put more money in stabilization, right? Or uh, put more money in in, uh, in those savings accounts, but we run up against the two and a half levy limit, which keeps us from being able to do it. Is, is that what I think you're saying, Tom? Uh, yeah. Um, okay. And, and you know, I, I wouldn't want to necessarily raise and appropriate for capital stabilization but but we could and and th and that's what you're talking about um well, well, we we're I, we're well, not we're, we're not super close to our levy limit but you know even if we hit it that might be an extra 100 150,000 dollars a year we're 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 not that far away from it either and it's we're we're close enough to it so that i it uh you know, people who can who can come out within a few dollars of their levy limit are financial gods and goddesses, um, and uh, there there's enough that's unknown here that um, you know I like having a hundred thousand dollar cushion in the levy limit in case something does come up. That makes sense. Yeah. And well, the, the the other problem with that strategy, of course, is that it doesn't it still keeps you in the in the the, the dichotomy or whatever of just having capital expenses paid for out of your operating budget, even if you're doing it through the savings route, um, the, 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 you know, it should be, it, it, it's, it's definitely a thing. We're always going to have sort of a, a, a poverty consciousness about our town. If we don't have an actual capital plan that's properly funded, um, cause we're never going to be able to address our needs. There's always going to be this backlog. Well, that's the fundamental issue is you're trying to run a capital budget in your operating budget and it, by its very definition, a capital plan is entirely separate from the operating budget. Right. It runs concurrent. It's not subsumed as part of it. Right. And, and for, you know, for Frontier, Frontier has faced this dilemma for many, for, for decades, and we finally broke through with the capital uh, a project of the track by treating it separately as a capital project for the first time ever and getting it funded yep. by the towns. Yep. Um, and, uh, but, but we know just from speaking with other schools that, that we were a, a, a holdout. We were like the loan, the lo we were trying to, for years, we were financing everything through every capital item through the operating budget. And the, the backlog was, became horrendous. So we had no choice. Finally. Yep, the school is a good example of delayed maintenance. Right, it's but hard it, to get away it, with that with trucks. Right, but but it also you know established the, the in black and white how the way we were doing it was not adequate, and we had to do this other thing instead because it's just math. Yep. So where are we? Well, we got you're going to have to. I, I think that, um, you know, for the, I, I don't know, Tom, you, it'll be up to you and the select board to figure out how to, how to put these options on a warrant. And obviously, I mean, send the finance committee will weigh in on, on, on them, I guess. <laughs> so as, as a capital committee, what we were doing was looking to say, are these things that we really need to spend money on? And we basically said, these are two projects that we really need to do. Right. And then 
where that money comes from, we probably would like to talk about it some more and come up with a recommendation, but it's really up to the finance committee and you and Tom working it out with the budget. And we'll, we'll know more how much money there is. So I, 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 I'd, I'd, I'd like to know if we can take us, you know, I think the only way to eventually get a cap, a funded capital plan is to keep asking for it. And, you know, you, so, so you tried five years in a row and they said no every year. But, it, but if you think it's the right thing to do, then you keep bringing it back. And sooner or later, they say yes. That's how it works. Um, but, I know, I have is... but, but I mean, that's, that's the real root problem. I mean, we're just going to be here the same thing next year with a whole list of needs that we're not going to be able to meet and the year after, or whatever. And it's just, you know, un until we address the root cause, which is the lack of a funded capital plan, um, despite the, the despite the previous best attempts, um, and, and there were valiant attempts. I, there there were times when I thought the thing was so well presented I couldn't believe that the vote came out like unanimously against it, like it did. Um, but uh, I, you know, I, I don't I don't I, I don't know more than that. But that is definitely, you know, it, 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 that that's. That, that is definitely what we should be looking at. It's not gonna happen by itself. It's a tough road to hoe, no doubt. But- um, Alan, what do you think? Oh, thank you. Well, uh, one thought would be that maybe at this coming uh, town meeting, the capital uh, committee make a presentation to the town and give it some better context. And that's one thought. The other thought would be with regard to the amount of certified new growth, which for all hill towns is a problem. Many hill towns are faced with under maintained infrastructure as a result, that maybe there'd be some discussion about a certain allocation every year of new growth just be automatically allocated right into the uh, long-term capital stabilization fund of the town. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's fine, but it, it doesn't, uh, I like the idea of trying to make people understand that there's operations and then there's the capital stuff and I, I like that idea, you know, but that's- a That means we'll have a, meeting, a long meeting this year again, even though we have four <laughs> less uh, highway department items. <laughs> well, well, ultimately, I think the Capital Improvements Planning Committee should have an article, which is the capital article, kind of like the operating budget, and, say, and give their presentation on where the capital plan is and how those items fit into it and have that voted on rather like the operating budget is voted on. That makes sense. <laughs> I, I've attended presentations where that's actually what goes on. In a, in a lot of towns that have a robust capitalization, capital stabilization and capital plan actually have that as a uh, dedicated part of their annual town meeting. Well, you have a robust capital stabilization for a town this size. It's actually pretty impressive that you have these stabilization funds. I think the point, particularly with the roads, and that's something that everybody in town can identify with because everybody lives on a road, is that they can't, it's hard for them to identify with one road in one place. <coughs> And what I've offered to do is work with Ron on doing the road inventory of all the roads in town and the length and what the condition is and giving it a grade and what it would cost to bring it up to what he estimates that road standard to be and what it would cost. And then everybody can see that and put it in perspective as to what it would cost. And then when you take that and all those roads in town and say, and oh, by the way, we're just asking for one mile on Shelburne Falls Road, and that's gonna cost $140,000. That sort of gives folks not only a frame of reference, but it puts it in perspective of how big the problem is and that we're just trying to deal with one road that's one of the main arterial roads in town. And you know that's all we can all do, right? We're volunteers. We're just trying to give town meeting the ability to make an informed choice and ultimately it's up to them. But that way they're not trying to make a decision about one road in one place in a vacuum, but they're seeing the bigger picture of all the roads in town. So like as Phil said, 
when we go year after year after year, they'll remember that in previous years we said, and next year we're coming to you with, you know, North Poland and Cherkshire or something like that. Remember we told you. And that way you start to build trust and credibility. The payment condition index uh, rating is what, what we don't do in this town and most, most of the larger professionally managed towns do. That'll be very helpful, thank you. It's not gonna be that sophisticated uh, if we wanna do it before town meeting, it will probably be a letter grade, but you know, you have to start somewhere. Well, it's a good place to and, start. And a lot I have. of to get grants to uh, use the payment condition index, as you know, uh, Tricia to, uh, you know, and that's why a lot of towns out east have an advantage over our towns out west. Not as much as you'd think, having come from there. <laughs> what are you saying, Steve? And I have, go, Ron. I have started that plan. So, yeah. I, I appreciate Trish offering, and I will take her up on that. <laughs> um, but it, a lot of it has already started. But well, I have a lot of the information. I'm just, she, I just need help putting it together and stuff. And I think she'll be great with that. Can this be done before town meetings, Ron, so that we can look at it in the finance committee and select board? I think we could have a, a pretty good handle on it. It might not be complete, but it'd be pretty, pretty, a pretty good piece of information, yes. Sounds like a plan. And Alan, just just to go sort of back about about your uh, your suggestion about the minimum contribution for new growth, I did just the the, the only the thing about that that sort of or uh, something related to that that makes me nervous is the amount of that increase every year that that is reflected in the increases in that EQV, which is the the the, the part about the town's income. Um, that, that goes into the minimum required contribution to our regional school budget. And the, the, the part about the frontier budget season that always makes me the most nervous is finding out the impact of that on our assessment for the budget every year because it's so wildly unpredictable. And um, m many of our big budget increases from frontier have been on years when frontier was at a two or 3% increase. And we would see a double digit increase because of the amount of the EQV that goes up every year. It's just, and it's it's so unpredictable. Yeah, it does inform us nuts, I agree. It's, and we're not a Title I town anymore either. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Any more? Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's this is a great discussion. It's why Roy and I love getting together with Trish and Ron and, you know, and, Talk about trucks and talk about paving. Well, thank, thank, so trucks and pavement. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all for that very much. Felt the first time, and this is my what, sixth year of being in a finance committee. We actually had a breakthrough discussion about the, the capital planning and budgeting, especially when it comes to things such as paving condition indi indices and all that. That's uh, that's really moving forward. It's great. Thank you. Ron does a good job hiding it from us and struggling to try to do it without talking about it and it, it, the, the price of paving has gone up so much that we can't keep do, hiding it forever. Yep. Okay. And the, 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 the thing about the, the, the capital planning thing, it's always been the same arguments that have defeated it. It really has been, you know, the same mindset that just says, what are you even talking about? You have to use everything until it dies, you know, and just, it's, it's, you know, and, and I get it. it's the whole Yankee culture. You see every little thing you save and not, you know, that's, but that's not the capital planning, you know, and, and so capital plan, the concept of it goes against that. Um, but that's, um, it's, it's the same, it's, it's like it's the same arguments every year. I've just never, there hasn't been a breakthrough. I think, you know. Tom, did you want to talk about the money articles some more? Um, no, I, I, I don't have uh, I don't have much on that um, at the moment. I think uh, maybe next week I'll have uh, I'll have some 
something uh, new on that. So the next time we meet is Tuesday of next week, the 16th. Is that correct? Jointly? Uh, right now, we don't have uh, we don't have any financial items scheduled for next week. So you can okay. uh, take that one off if you like. Well, I have a question for you, Phil Cantor, in the Conway Grammar yes. School. Between yes. now and February 23rd, will there be any kind of preliminary budget to uh, share that's still too premature? Yeah, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow Frontier is scheduled to vote on a on preliminary budget numbers. All right. And uh, Thursday, Conway Grammar School is scheduled to vote on preliminary budget All numbers. Right. So I, I can reach out to uh, the various contacts, the two different... Uh, between the grammar school and the regional, and get get a preliminary budget, maybe I can. Yeah. Or would you rather, or, or you would you rather that Tom Hutchinson you do that and forward it to us? I'll forward whatever I receive. Okay. Thank you. Tom, those are fine. You're in annoy you. That's all. When are the schools well, coming in? What's that? When, when are the schools coming in? Or well, the. So fe fe February is the rough budget number, and March is the final budget votes. Um, but we should know, we more or less do know what the parameters are going to be and what the possible changes might be. So, um, but you know, the, the numbers look, you know, except it's a pandemic budget. The numbers look acceptable. We'll find out. I'll find out tomorrow's budget meeting what the assessment numbers are. Because right. those were still. Yeah, the the later they wait, the better the numbers will be, because they'll have a better idea of what's going to happen the next year. Yep. Very true. Very true. Yep. Thank you. So is that it for the finance meeting? I have a question. Does Erica has Erica not weighed in on any of this about the capital planning? Process I, yeah, I not waited. I mean, as you know, I was, this is my very first budget cycle. Um, I'm very new to the select board. Um, you know, I'm taking I, notes, but I, a lot of this is, is a learning. Um, this is absolutely a learning experience for me. <laughs> I'm taking it in. Okay. Definitely. Um, but, and I, you know, I, I, I intend to weigh in, but I'm, I'm just serving. <laughs> I think mostly right now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I guess we're excused. Thank you all. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank Have you. The rest of the we're near the Max. end of our agenda. Just you know. So the, the next thing on our agenda, if I'm right, Tom, you finished your update. Was the select board concerns? Okay. Anybody have concerns? Good night, folks. Good night. No, I just, or comments or requests for things for the next agenda? Um, yeah. I'm just, I'm just um, addressing the issue that Robert brought up, um, the transfer station, and whether that, like, what the next steps are for that. I know, I think, Tom, you said you were going to, um, or Bob, you had reached out to Kenny, um, but I'm just curious what role we are expected to play in that. Uh, um, I would say that, you know, I mean, we're not responsible for the transfer station, but we seem to be, we're clearly, you know, the recipient of comments just like that note. And that's wonderful. I mean, we should get those kinds of notes, uh, you, you know, we, but pass, you know, making sure that Carl is aware of what's going on and trying to get Carl and Kenny to talk and making sure there's a solution is what I see is our responsibility. Um, you know, Tom was going to talk to Ken and see whether Ken had received that that comment or that that feedback from the attendant at the transfer station, and that's serious. And Ken might have a suggestion of what to do, whether we need to station a a, a Conway patrolman at the station during some of, the, of its hours, or um, I, I mean. I believe it puts the station attendants in a very tough spot to have them have to enforce, oh. uh, you know, the, basically the governor's mandate and, and we're not being funded to enforce the governor's mandate. And, Public yeah. stockade oh. town commons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you know what, maybe, you know, 
I don't know this whether the w w whether the station attendants are are allowed to hand out Conway tickets. You know, we 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 created the idea of a Conway ticket, and we do give them out. Um, but that puts them in a tough spot too to have to hand out a ticket. You know, that's uh, right now they are not they are not um, allowed to give out tickets. Uh huh. So, uh, you yeah. know, Eric, I'm not answering your yeah. question, but it, it's, and, and yeah, it's, it's a good question. It's the right thing. You know, if, if, if something doesn't happen, then yes, I think we should invite, uh, you know, the Board of Health and Ken in to talk. No, that is helpful. I mean, for me, like I said, I feel like this is so much, <laughs> this is a learning experience for me. So I really appreciate, like, you know, clarification about that in terms of like the role that the select board is supposed to play in you know, situations like this. But there's also the traditional, you know, in, you know the public stockade is a bit overboard, but, um, you know, the, the, there is a role for the, just the use of public shame as a behavior modification. And, you know, just taking a picture of somebody, posting it up on the outside and saying, if you know this person, please encourage them to wear a mask when they take their when they visit the transfer station, things like that, <laughs> things like that, that, you know, that, that, that might be an acceptable, uh, I don't know, I, I, I would be okay with that. Everybody, some people might start not wearing their mask proudly just to get their picture up there. You know, I, I don't, yeah. I don't know what the solution would be. Yeah. yeah. But yes, clearly we, we, we don't want to leave the attendants, you know, responsible to try to force this issue. And, and we, we all know from the news every day that this is a gigantic issue. That there are definitely people who are resistant to wearing a mask, which Governor Baker mandates, let alone our Board of Health mandates. Tom, is there any mail? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, so the only mail that I got, uh, Eric, is just the same issue that you just brought up. And thanks for doing that. Okay. No, we're uh, we're good. We, we did get something from the regional housing authority just reporting on their. They do a quarterly report. Uh, it's in the it's in the mail folder if anybody wants to see it. Any announcements? Ah, this is where I announced that I've been offered my uh, a position in Dalton. Uh, still still uh, in contract negotiations, um, uh, but uh, I'll uh, I'll send out a note uh, with the sixty day notification should those be concluded uh, when those are concluded. Congratulations on your new job, Tom. Yeah, best wishes. Thank you. Definitely. As chair, I can say I hate to see you go, but. That's uh, very kind. Of you. I, you know, I mean, this has been something that's been coming for a year now, so it's not, not a surprise. Just a question of when. So our next meeting is but February. Sure. If we're going to be left behind it at the altar, at least it is to a town that does have significantly brighter financial prospects for the, you know, near and mid and long term. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just a long way from Greenfield. It is. So our next meeting is next Tuesday, not on Monday, because Monday's a holiday. So it'll be Tuesday, February 16th at six o'clock. And with that, I'll adjourn the meeting.